in um, in Ephesians chapter six. I'm, I just want to make sure that that I was hearing what the Spirit, the Lord was just kind of showing with me, uh, showing to me during during worship. So, um, so yeah. So I just it's going to be fun. Glory. Look at look at verse ten. Good. Hey, good evening. How is everybody doing tonight? Are you blessed? You know, uh, um, uh, before the service, as I, as I was studying, um, <clears throat> Jennifer walked into the, the office where I was studying, and 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 she 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 saw me there on the couch like this, and and she swears I was asleep. I'm telling her I was just meditating. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Oh, um, it has been something else this week. And this is going to, this is going to be good because staying in the flow of joy, yeah. you know, we've been learning about it is, I'm telling you it without going into the details, uh, you know, and things like that, we had opportunities to, um, right after the service, you know, just to, just to operate in that. It was, you know, it, it was awesome to, to see what, what God did as a result of it, and it, and and one of these days, maybe I'll get to share it with you. But uh, man, this stuff works. Yes, it just absolutely works. Then the next day, I had more opportunities, and then the next day, and you know, I woke up Monday and Tuesday, and getting just up and saying, "Father, I thank you that you rejoice over me to do good." That scripture has just been just burning on the inside of me that whatever's going on out here, he rejoices over me to do good. Yes. And he is planting me in the land with all of his heart. Yes. That is just an awesome, awesome scripture to know the heart of the Father God. And so I just trust and I just rest in that. And, uh, and, and the rest of the stuff that happens, it all, it all works out. Amen, because God's rejoicing over me to do good. It is so good. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, he said, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Okay, so uh, these, these are some things. These, uh, let me see how, let me explain some things to you about Ephesians for just a moment. And you'll see this throughout uh, throughout the New Testament, particularly through Paul's letters. There are, but Ephesians is a great example of this. Ephesians chapters 1, 2, and 3, they really talk to you about who you are, what your identity is. You've been buried with him. You've been raised up together with him. And you've been made to sit in heavenly places by, you know, in Christ Jesus and how God has uh, the same power that he used when he raised Jesus from the dead. That's the same power that is working on the inside of us. That is the same, the greatness of his love towards us. And so we, we learn from Ephesians chapter one, two, and three, who we are. And then because we learn about what happened with Jesus and who we are, then Ephesians chapters four, five, and six, then talk about as a result of who we are, this is how we live. Okay. And, 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 so, and that's important. Both of them are important. It's not that uh, uh, chapters 4, 5, and 6 are, are intended to give you rules and to give you law. It's 4, 5, and 6 is intended to, to show you that out of who you are, this is how you live. It's something that is from the inside out, not from something from the outside that you're trying to work in. And, and so it's important that we learn, uh, you know, as we go through the scripture, he, he identifies kind of just who we are and then how we to live. And it's important that we, that we know those things, all right? And so we're going to see some things from that tonight. But so here, what this is, is this is an exhortation of, of some things that, that we need to do out of who we are, okay? That's, you have to understand the context that... Who we are has been given. So now these are the things that we can do out of who we are. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Why? Because the Lord's on the inside of you. And in the power of his might, we can either lean on the power of the spirit of God or we can lean on the power of our own flesh, on our, on our natural ability. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
Now, I want you to look at a key word here. He said, that you may be able to stand. All right? We're, we're going to see this word three times here in the next three or four verses. And, and that was the thing that I was looking up, is how many times in the New Testament does it tell us to stand? Where, where is that word used? And, and there's a couple, of thing, a couple of places that I was already studying um, today uh, regarding this, but, but the Holy Spirit is keying in on this word to stand, all right? And, and you'll see why. He said, you put on the whole armor of God. So this is something that we get to do. We get to make the decision that this is the way that I'm going to be clothed, okay? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Amplified says that you may be able to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Now, understand, some people think that the, that the devil has power to cause all kind of stuff to happen in your life. Think that he has all kind of power to bring sickness into your life, to, to, to cause wrecks in your life, to cause things to happen. And so anything that bad has happened, you know, we, we automatically go and just say, well, the devil did this, you know. Now, uh, I'm not saying that he can't inspire others to, to, to come against you or whatever, but, um, but what I am saying is that sometimes I think that we give the devil too much power in what he can do in our lives or in the earth today. If you want to see how the devil operates, you have to go back to the very beginning with Adam and Eve. And all that he did there is he simply told something that wasn't true and, told, and, 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 and deceived. It says that Eve was deceived. And, she, and, and Adam's the one that he wasn't deceived. He just went ahead and just committed the sin anyway. But the, the goal was to deceive. To deceive Adam and Eve into thinking something that wasn't true. And so here, when he says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the craftiness, the deceits of the devil. Oh, I'm already getting excited. So stand, remember, stand. Look, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, you, there's, never, uh, there's never any time that you are dealing with people that don't like you or whatever, that you don't, you don't ever need to take them and say, they're the ones that I'm fighting against. I'm fighting against my boss. I'm fighting against a fellow employee. I'm fighting against a family member. You're ne we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I was talking to somebody today that uh, was dealing with a family situation, and and so there was a lot of there was a lot of hurt from the past that was that was that was being worked out in in this in this particular situation, and and so as I was as I was talking to him. What I recognized, because they couldn't understand, this individual couldn't understand why the other individual in their family was, was talking to them this way. Because it seemed like to them that the other individual didn't understand their viewpoint and wasn't concerned about what she, what, what she was going through at the time. And so I said, you know, what you have to realize is, is that I think the other person in your family is also responding out of hurt is also responding out of pain. And so um, they don't see, they don't see what you're going through because they're so focused on themselves. And so many times we will, in relationship, get so affected by individuals that we don't recognize that one, you know, we're, we're, well, let's put it this way. We can be so affected personally, by the way that people react to you and things like that, that we don't recognize that it's really um, the spirit behind it. Maybe they're deceived. Maybe they're only uh, uh, 
interested in themselves or maybe they're only interested in what they're going through or maybe there's some pain or maybe there's some hurt that they've gone through um, at that time. And so if we, would, if we would get out of ourselves for just a moment and forget about our own stuff and forget about our own feelings and forget about, you know, what they said it could have hurt you and, and start looking at, what, at what's happening in their life. And what is it that's causing them to be this way? Then what you do is you recognize that you're not wrestling against them. You're not fighting against them. You are, you're, you're wrestling against spiritual wickedness, spiritual things. Maybe they're the ones that didn't stand and maybe they're the ones that, that's deceived, see? But you cannot deal with it correctly if you don't know where the battle is. So now, when you recognize that, now, in your time of prayer, what are you doing? Father, I pray, I'm, I'm, Lord, in Jesus' name, I'm praying for this individual that the eyes of their understanding are enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of your calling. Father, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the pain and the hurt and the things that they've gone through and whatever it is that's caused them to be deceived, in the name of Jesus, I declare that they'll no longer be deceived. And you start speaking life into them. You start speaking truth into them. You, start, you stop thinking about what they're doing to you and you start thinking about what you can do for them, not to them, but for them in the realm of the spirit. See? So you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and all of that. All right, look at the next verse. Wherefore, take unto you... So the, again, this is an ex exhortation. This is what we can do now that we are born again, now that we have His Spirit on the inside of you. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Withstand, Withstand in the evil day and having done all what? Stand. To stand. So I, th I think standing is important. Now, let me, let's, let's define this word stand for just a second. What does it mean when he says to stand, to stand therefore, to stand in the evil day? What does it mean to stand? Well, I think that what you're going to see here as we go through this is standing isn't talking about you know, staying at a place that you're just handling this onslaught and you're just, and it, you know, it's not just being beat down so much that you have to try to keep from stepping back, okay? It's more of that you've drawn a line in the sand. It's more of that you've made a decision concerning some things in your life, concerning what God has said, that you are going to continue to embrace and to not let the devil rob from you. Remember how we talked earlier in the, su uh, uh, the summer about the philosophies beware, that you be deceived by the philosophies of men? Yeah. And, that it's, it, and, and that it is something that is designed by the enemy to come and to spoil you, to take from you that which you already have? Turn with me uh, to Galatians. Look at Galatians chapter 5 for a moment. Galatians is such a powerful book. Um, as I was reading through it, I mean, he talks about, he's really, oh man, you get the heart of, of Paul here. And he's really trying to, he's, he's seeing this, this group of believers that, that had, man, they had freedom. And then somebody came in and said, you're going to have to start uh, uh, now living by the law. So Jesus saved you, now start living by the law. And and as a result, they stopped living in freedom. They started having to keep all of these rules and regulations. So, so Paul is using all of these arguments, particularly in chapter 4. He says um, in verse 22, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by the bondmaid, the other by a free woman. So he's now describing this situation where Abraham had a son Ishmael from the slave woman Hagar, and then he, she, then he had Isaac from the free woman Sarah. And so he's making, he says, this is all a type and a shadow that Hagar represents Mount Sinai, and that 
today or to that day, Jerusalem is Hagar, is, the, or, or is Ishmael. They are the, the children of bondage. That's what the law did. But he said, you are not so. You are the children. You are from, you are the new Jerusalem. You are the Jerusalem that is in heaven. We being in heaven, we being seated at the right hand of God, we make up the new Jerusalem. And that is the one that comes from Sarah. So it says right here, I love this. Oh, this is so awesome. It says, now we brethren, uh, in verse 28, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. People even today want to persecute those that want to be free. They feel like that when you come into church, there has to be a certain set of rules and regulations and you have to live your life a certain way and that is what shows that you are a Christian when in reality, when you come in and you're led by the Spirit. Oh, man. Oh, we, we're going to see this. We're the children of promise. Nevertheless, verse 30 says, what says the scriptures? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. Get the religion out. Get the law out. Get the works out. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be the heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman. We are not children of the slave woman. We are not children of the law, but of the free. We are children of promise. Now look at verse, uh, chapter five, verse one. What's the first word? Stand. Stand fast. I don't know how you stand fast. I thought standing means you're just still. No, no. stand fast. Look at this. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, this tells me that there's something that I have to do. There's something that I have to uh, uh, make a decision about. I have to decide that I'm going to not let Satan encroach into my life right. and I'm going to stand in freedom. Yeah. I'm regardless of what anybody else says, regardless of what anybody else. I, in other words, that what was happening in the church at this time, people were coming in, Satan was coming in to try to, to try to cause people to begin to be entangled again to bondage in some way or the other. What you find out is they started keeping feast days. They started maybe keeping the Sabbath. They started thinking you have to do this, 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 and that. And if you're not cautious, what will happen is, is you'll begin to see, you'll begin to think that I've got to do more and you'll stop standing fast in your liberty. And when you stand and when you stop standing in that and when you won't hold on to that and when you and when you won't have the uh, uh, the pit bull, the tenacious uh, mentality that I will not allow anybody, I will not allow Satan to rob me of my freedom because I am fully accepted by God. I am his son. I am free. I can boldly come to the throne, throne room of grace at any point. If, I will, if, I, if I'm not cautious and I won't stand in that, then I will gradually allow deception to come in and to rob me from that which God has already blessed me with. Let's go on. Let's go down. Um, I could go through the whole chapter five, but it, it's so awesome. But we're not going to do that. In verse 16, he says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So he's now kind of talking about the spirit versus the flesh. And he goes through and, and, and he, he starts talking about what that is. Look at verse 18. But if you, here it is, if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. 
Thank you, Father. If you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, what is he saying? And this is, this is something that I think sometimes we miss. This is the reason why it is so important that we are led by the Spirit of God every day. See, um, what Jesus did on the cross, what he did, the grace of God that has been given was given so that we would be indwelt by the Spirit of God. And by being indwelt by the Spirit of God, that as we are led by the Spirit of God every single day, every single moment, that what happens is, is we don't have to worry about law. We don't have to worry about thou shalt not. We don't have to worry about we're supposed to do this. The Spirit of God has given the law, has written it on our hearts, has written it on our minds. And as we continue to meditate and as we continue to pray in the Spirit and as we allow the Spirit of God to lead us, we don't have to be concerned about those things. So it's really standing in the liberty of being led by the Spirit of God every day. Amen. That is, and you have to believe that. I'm going to say that again. You have to believe that. You have to expect that. Thank you, Lord. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. Against all of these things. Now, this is fruit. This is fruit, one, that comes out of you because that's who you are. You are just, you're just bearing fruit. But two, when you're led by the Spirit, then there's fruit that happens in your situation. There's fruit that, uh, the fruit of how you react to somebody is love, Joy, this is, this, is, this is how you know, am I being led by the Spirit in this situation? Mm -hmm. Is this fruit attached to what I'm doing? Yeah. It's a good measuring stick. Yes, it is. Look at verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, that's our identity. That's who we are. Now, the reality is let us also walk in the Spirit. So if my reality is that I'm living in the Spirit, I am now part of the kingdom of God, now let me allow that to be manifested through my life and let me walk in the Spirit every day. Amen. See? Now go back to Ephesians 6. Let's run through this real quick. So in verse 14, he says, so, um, well, verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, you've done everything to stand. You will not allow Satan to rob from you that which you already have. Stand therefore, there it is again, another time, verse 14, stand therefore. In other words, this is very important that we take a, on our responsibility not just, not just, oh, whatever happens is going to happen. I'm going to stand. I'm not going to allow Satan to Amen. deceive me out of my inheritance. That's right. That's right. Having your loins girt about with truth. So now he's going to describe some of these areas of the armor. Having your loins girt about with truth. Around your midsection, around your reproductive organs. I think this is important. Because truth, Jesus said, your word is truth, O Lord, that we've been born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And words are seeds that can reproduce in your life. And so what I want to make sure is that the only thing that's reproducing in my life is that which comes from the word is, th is that which is truth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I am, 
I am covered by the word of God. I, I have my loins girded about anything that can reproduce out of my spirit, anything that can reproduce out of my life. It needs to be the word of God. It has to be truth. See, it's deception that Satan would try to come at you with, right? And so what I've got to do is if I'm guarded by truth, then I can't be deceived. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, your right standing with God. Satan would try to come. That's good. Satan would try to come and cause you to live under condemnation. He would try to come and cause you to, um, to live under a thought of, I'm not worthy. This is what I did. And so because the condemnation, the guilt, the shame, as he would try to bring those thoughts to you, you know, uh, uh, in your life, then once you buy into that, once you accept that, then what you've done is you've given him entrance into your life. So, have your breastplate of righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am accepted by him. You can't bring guilt, shame, and condemnation to me, devil, in the name of Jesus, because I am his child. I am complete in Jesus Christ. Maybe I made a mistake. That doesn't matter. Forgiveness has already been given, and so you're not going to condemn me. My father rejoices over me to do what? Good. I just love that. I, I, want to, I preach it every service for that matter. It's so good. <laughs> Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. God's not mad at you anymore. Amen. See, when, he, when, when Jesus came, it said peace on earth, goodwill towards men. The peace on earth isn't peace among everybody. The peace on earth is, is the peace between man and God. And so now, the, as uh, the gospel of peace is to, is to declare that. Mm -hmm. It is to declare that there is peace now between you and God. God accepts you. God loves you. God's not angry with you anymore. And so again, this is a way that we are, we are standing against the deceits of the devil. How does he come? He comes with thoughts. See, so what we're doing here is, 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 is you know, we're not out there fighting uncertainly, uncertainly, what we're doing is we're dealing with his attacks towards our mind, his attacks in our life, something that may come from something that somebody says, or maybe I've watched the wrong preacher on television that says something that doesn't make sense to me and it's got me all messed up. You got to be cautious about those things. Above all, and I love, I love this, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yes, not, some of, some, not some of them. <laughs> you shall be able to quench them all. What's the shield of faith? Man, it's, it's believing what God has said. It's believing it's, it's you have two opposing thoughts. You have, you have the thought that Satan would come, that, uh, um, that you're not worthy, that you'll never get it done, that, uh, that you'll never fulfill your purpose in life. And then you got the other thought that comes from the word that says, no, I have made you worthy, that I have made you meet and able to be partakers of the saints in life. And, then, and the spirit of God, you start hearing, Abba, Father, G God is my Father. And so... When you buy into, when you believe that, it takes care of all of these other thoughts right. that come in. What about, when, what about sickness? What about healing? What about that thought? Um, man, the sickness, uh, uh, this could be an incurable disease. Have you ever noticed? <laughs> Dad used to preach this all the time. But, um, uh, you know, the way he would say it is the devil has a flip chart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every one of you is going to remember that from now on. Um, it has a flip chart, you know, if you, if you have a, uh, you know, like a pain, you know, maybe a headache or something, you know, it's never, it's never just a headache, you know, it's a, uh, it could be a tumor, you know, it's like, the, you know, it's, it's the first thing. I've never had a pain like this before. 
You know, it's not quite like a, a regular headache. So I wonder if it's a tumor. No, 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 it's not a tumor. There's no way it's a tumor. Well, uh, maybe if it's not a tumor, maybe it's just, uh, uh, maybe it's a migraine headache that's getting ready to happen. No, no, I don't receive migraine headaches in the name of Jesus. Well, maybe you just work so much or maybe you forgot to drink some tea or some caffeine and so that's just a headache, a caffeine deficient headache. Yes, I believe that's exactly what it is. And so, you know, it's, it goes down the list until you will accept something. And so you, you, you stood for a while, but then you allowed him to encroach upon you. No, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what the Word of God says. By his stripes, I am healed. And that's what I choose to believe. And because I choose to believe it, then I'm quenching the fiery dart. I'm just it, I, quenching. It's like it's fire. I just poured water on it. Psh, it's gone. Done. You take care of it at the source. But what happens if you don't, what happens if you choose to believe that thought, that dart first, then what you've done is now that little fiery dart becomes, it sets on fire the course of nature. And it grows into a big inferno forest fire that makes it a little bit more difficult to put out. Y'all see that? Yeah. Yeah. Take unto you the helmet of salvation. See? His, uh, his deli- what he has done for you, how he has delivered you. Guard your mind yeah. with thoughts of salvation. There was a song, I think, that Hannah was singing. He sings, he sings over us with songs of salvation. I mean... Think about how you've been delivered. That helmet protects your mind the more that you think about what he's done. I'm going to stand in the salvation that Christ has saved me with. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. And then, of course, we're going to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit is our offensive weapon. I'm not going to just sit there and just take the thoughts, take the thoughts, take the thoughts, take the thoughts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do what Jesus did. I'm going to speak the word of God. I'm going to say, no, this is what God has said about me. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved it, loved us. By his stripes, I am healed. I have peace within my family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I'm going to speak the word of God, regardless of what my kids are doing, regardless of what everybody else is doing. I'm going to speak the word of God, and I'm going to use the sword of the Spirit. Isn't it interesting that in Revelations chapter 1, as it describes Jesus, it says that out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. See, that's the same thing. That's what we have. The same power, the same creative power that Jesus had is what we have for our situation. Uh, Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, than anything that would come your way. It just slices it and dices it. And man, so I'm going to stand. What did you say? Makes big, I don't know what you said. Okay, <laughs> slicing and dicing. I think it, it brought up an infomercial or something like that in our mind. Makes beautiful fries. <laughs> now look at verse eighteen. We are also to be praying always, yes. with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all. Look, watching. On guard thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And he said, pray for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. But we need to have a lifestyle of prayer. Praying always that we may, let's see, I'm going to. I'm hot. I meant like temperature. Hot. So I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. Uh, (laughs) 
watching thereunto with all perseverance for supplication for the saints. So here's what I want to do for just a few moments. <coughs> is, 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 let's see, is for us to pray, think about what's going on in your life, think about others that you know, um, maybe others that are, that are struggling, that have issues, maybe they've reacted to you because of their own struggles. Yeah. And let's, and let's pray. <clears throat> let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray for our spouse. Let's pray for our extended family members. Let's pray for our church family. Yeah. Um, and, and, and some of you say, well, you know, we, that's not what we usually do around here. Okay. So <laughs> I just read in the word of God where we should be praying with all prayer and supplication. Are you okay with that, Miss Juanita? I know you are. <laughs> My prayer warrior over there. In season and out of season. So, Miss Juanita, since you're ready, why don't you come up here and let's just pray. You, for, for, for you that, that haven't heard Miss Juanita pray, you're going to hear what it means to pray the Word of God. Amen. 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 So look, if you want to lift your hands towards heaven, you can. If you don't, that's fine. And, 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 and let's just pray for a few minutes. It's not, we don't have to go. We come before you in the name of Jesus with come thanksgiving on. in our heart. Yes, Lord. Thanking you for the word going forward tonight. And I'm believing right now that everyone in this room have received that word. Yes, Jesus, We're going to incline my words to your saying. We're going to keep them in the midst of our heart. Yes. We're going to talk the word. We're going to do the word. Yes. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come boldly to the throne of God yes, with thanksgiving Lord. in our heart. We ask Lord. you tonight, Father, just fill everybody in this room every day and every night with, with the spirit Lord, of God. Lord. Let them get up in the morning searching for God. Receiving the word of God. Yes, let the word not be torn void, but let it prosper where it's sin. Yes, Lord, Lord, we pray that uttering be given to everyone in this room the boldness of God. Come on. We, don't, we pray, Father, in the name of Spirit, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, that this whole world, we pray over our nations. Yes. We're not going to take nothing for granted. Yes. We're going to keep on praying and holding this world up to, the, to God's word. Lord, because we're not going to accept anything from the enemy because the enemy is a liar. He has no control over nothing in this world. God told me in the word that he would perfect everything concerning yes, us. Lord. To cast down everything and try to exhaust itself against our mind. Yes, Lord, Lord, tonight I pray for labors to go out all over this world, Lord. Yes. To teach them the word. Bring the word forward, Father. And Lord, tonight I just pray on my church tonight, Father. Because we're asking the things I have prayed for is already coming to pass. Yes, we are, this, is, this is a supernatural church. Yes. We are believing everything we pray in this church has already been done. The manifestation yes. already been done. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray the prayer of faith all around this church. All up the hill, down the hill, all around the hill, from north, south, east, and the west. Lord, today we pray the favor of God, the favor of God over all of us. And most of all, I thank God for my pastor. Lord, I ask you to continue to open his mind up to receive the word. And I pray for the protection of his family, that no weapon be formed against his family in us in this church shall prosper. And Lord, we all going to pray and together in agreement tonight that things going to happen better and better in this church because things are being changed. And we're going to keep on believing that it's being changed. We, 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 we are in here together in one accord. Yes. No division because we all in one accord. If God had made us all the same color, we wouldn't be in place. We'd still have been grumbling. But right now, Father, we are of a different, we are different races, a different everything, but we are all in one body of Christ. Yes, I love you, Lord, for teaching me how to love and how to be at peace with my neighbors and how to be at peace with my fellow workers, how to be in peace with my pastor and his family. I pray tonight I thank God for Brother Frank and Pat. Because they taught me so much in life. I thank God for each one of them, Lord, because if it hadn't been for them teaching me, I wouldn't be here tonight. And I thank God for teaching me and letting me stay here this year. 83 years, I'll be 83 years old in October. I ask you, Lord, to continue to let me be able to pray for my church and be here and be here every Sunday and, and pray and pray to everything around us is working, 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 with, working in the name of Jesus. So as I end my prayer tonight, I end it with the word of God. That great and mighty things going to happen, God, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And in the name of Jesus, I give you the praising, I give you the honor, and I give you the glory of this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 
Now, if that didn't fire you up, that's what they do before the service there every Sunday morning, you know, back there in that room. If you ever want to be a part of that and, and need a little kickstart before, I mean, just go back there and just pray with them. Because, number one, it's, it's the, uh, you know, the Bible talks about the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman. And even as, even as she prayed, she was praying the Word of God. She was praying uh, not the problem, but praying what God had said. And not only that, but the prayer wasn't just something that was, okay, this is what I'm supposed to pray. But, the, but it was sincere and it was fervent. For the fervent, right? I mean, I'm talking about, you're talking to your Father God. Get, it, get into that place of prayer. Stand in your liberty. Stand in your freedom. Stand and not allow anything that Satan would try to deceive you. Don't let him deceive you into anything that would rob you from freedom and being led by the Spirit of God right. every day. And we're going to... What's that, Dave? Okay. David's got something to say. And, and don't let... Um, don't run out. <laughs> we got to go. And um, <laughs> amen. No. <laughs> don't, don't let... Um, uh, you made me lose my train of thought now. Just don't let... Just don't, Just don't let it. Whatever it was I was going to say, don't let it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. The last few months, uh, <laughs> every kind of thing that can go wrong with a trailer that I bought has gone wrong. It had one of these high tailgates on it and use it for a ramp. Well, after I cut the grass out here one one day, I load up, I get home, no ramp. So that means I got to go buy a couple of aluminum ramps, and we're, you know, 100 bucks a throw. Yeah. So I bought one and loaded up and everything, and <laughs> had them, a bungee cord, had them tied off. I lost one of them. I mean, it just, well, it wound up anyway. I've had to buy two sets of, of the aluminum ramps. Today, after I got through cutting the grass, <clears throat> I stopped not too far down Highway 119 and checked them to make sure they were still on there. And they were. I checked everything. When I got home, no ramps, neither one of them. Well, here I had a, a great opportunity, and I almost lost it. I mean, <laughs> if, if this had been back before I was saved, I mean, I would have turned to air a dark red with the cursing. I learned from my dad, and at one time I could probably curse for two hours and never repeat myself. <laughs> but anyway, I was really getting irritated with this deal, and I'm thinking, man, I'm, you know, you know. And all of a sudden, it just, I just stopped, and I said, no, that's no way to go. And I said, Lord, I appreciate you taking care of me. You've, you've blessed me in so many ways, and, and I'm asking you, I'm going to look for those, and I believe I'll find them before anybody else does, and I appreciate it, Lord. Thank you. Well, I started down the mountain, and it's a dirt road, and it didn't get too far, and there was one of the ramps. <laughs> I said, thank you, Lord. And I drove on further down, and there was the other ramp. And I was fortunate that, that the road's not traveled that much. You know, there's, not, there's only two other people that live on, the, on that mountain. And you just, you have to realize that, that the Lord will take care of you. And, and 
all that yang yang yang, you know, that just won't cut it. And all you got to do is just thank them ahead of time, and it turns out just fine. So yeah. praise God, I'm, praise I'm blessed. God. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Praise God. Don't pass up opportunities to stay in joy. Amen.